Hello. Um, so today I want to talk about subsurface scattering uh, when using the Blender internal render. Um, so first of all, let's see what is subsurface scattering. Um, subsurface scattering is the feature that allows uh, light to go uh, to go through an object and make the other side of the surface visible even if the light source is completely behind the object. So I will demonstrate that very quick by setting up a simple scene uh, with this monkey here and a light source behind it. So I'm just going to put this monkey here in front of the camera and put the light behind it. Okay, like this. Now we have here our camera, then here the object and behind it the light. And then I'll set up very quick the material for uh, this object and this is also where, where we have our subsurface scattering tools and I'll choose very quick a preset just so we can see um, what it does. So let's take skin for example. So when we render it I'll just make the background black so, as you can see, um, the light source is completely behind our object, but still um, we can see the light through the object, especially at the thin parts of the object. Here, where it is more thick, we actually have less light. Um, if we would turn off subsurface scattering, our result would look like this. Completely black, because no light is going through the object. Now, if we have light a bit um, on on one side of the object, we can see that the object is still there, uh, but with hard shadows and everything. And now let's activate subsurface scattering again, and we can see that we still have the light going through the object, but the, there where the light directly hits the surface we have the um, we can see it even brighter okay so that was just what subsurface scattering is and some of the details of it uh, but now let's see what each one of these parameters are doing um, so let's put this slide behind the object again and let's add a new material okay so first of all you have to activate subsurface scattering um, to activate it <coughs> yeah um, what what so let's have a look at the first value here uh, the it's called the IOR uh, value and it's actually just the, the refraction of the light uh, rays when they enter the object or when they um, leave, it, leave the object again and it when you you can the change between um, the difference between a render with a high IR value and a low one is really um, slightly so yeah, normally I leave this value just as it is right now but if you want to uh, be exact and do everything right you can look up in the internet for an IOR value sheet where you can look up for different materials for example glass would be 1.45 or oil would be I think something about 1.4 a special type of oil I, I don't know exactly what these welds are, but they are um, for each material one specific value. So just look up for them in the internet. Uh, but you can also leave it as it is here. That's what I normally do. <coughs> okay, the next value here is the scale of the object. Um, so if you would use a value of 1, that would mean that one blender unit here 
um, shows one millimeter in um, really. So um, the higher this value is, um, the smaller this object appears. Uh, another example would be if you would use a value of 0 0.1, the scale would be for one blender unit one centimeter. 0 0.01 would be 10 centimeter per blender unit, and 0 0.001 would be one meter per blender unit. And there is a big difference between renders with um, a value as 0 0.1, as we had it already, or one with um, with a value which is lower. So I have to change a few settings here. Uh, I will explain them later, just so we can see a result that looks good. Okay. So this would be for now um, our result with a scale of 0.1 but now let's see what happens if we would change that to 0.5 As you can see more light is going through the object and th the reason for that is because um, the object should appear now as if it would be smaller and if the whole object would be smaller the whole thing would be thinner and light uh, wouldn't be absorbed so much. Um, so it's the same thing in the other way, so if we would use a value of 0 0.01 there would be less light going through it, so we actually can't see anything now. So we need to use a high value to see a little bit. So yeah, as you can see there's not much light anymore going through the object. Yeah, and that's what this value is. Okay, so the next one is this um, scattering color is called, but it's a bit um, different from the name it has. It's actually more um, the amount of light um, that gets scattered. So if you have a bright color, let's let's see what happens just if we use uh, these gray colors here. Uh, if we would have a white, there would be no light getting scattered, and we'd see everything black. Now, if you would use a gray like this, that would mean that more light gets scattered, and we can see more of a subsurface scattering effect. I'll just change this value very quick so we can see more in our render. So again, here light light gets through easily, and now with the brighter value, there is less light that gets scattered actually. Um, the uh, if you would set that now to a total black, you actually can't see anything. The reason for that is because it also changes the scattering color. And if you use a black, obviously um, you can't see anything anymore. So if you want to have a uh, normal um, looking subspace scattering effect, you use something like gray about here. That should work fine. Uh, but but there also there's also the possibility to um, use colors here. So if you would use a high value for the red color, that would mean that less um, of the red color of the light would get scattered, and that would mean that the color of the object would be exactly the opposite of what you choose here. So if we have less light from the red channel. Uh, to get scattered, we would have only the green and the blue color channel left. And that would mean we would have a mix between green and blue. And there you have it. It looks like this. Okay, now that was 
everything I had to say about this value. Oh, I'll just make them the same again. But now let's have a look at, at the RGB radius. Now, to show you what this one does, I'll ch um, probably change the scene. Uh, okay, let's do this later on if we really need to do that. But um, th these three values actually um, show or, or change the radius of, of um, the light to get scattered. So if you have here a high value, the light um, would spread into a, a larger area. And if it would be less, the area would be smaller. But also, if you have different colors, uh, different values here, you will also have again different colors. And so, first of all, I'll just change all of them to a high value to see the, to show you the difference. So, as you can see, um, by doing that, so th this was the result with all the values to 1 and this is the, w the result with all the values to 5 and as you can see we can see more light it looks like uh, more light would get through the object but not, that's not actually not the case because actually the light is just getting uh, spread to a larger area so, so there is still the same amount of light on this object but just the the very bright um, places in in the um, here in the render uh, became darker, and those dark, very dark places got brighter. And yeah, and, and now let's see what happens if we change just um, one of these values. Again, I will change uh, I will change the red one. I set this one to five, and the other ones to one. And now there is a pretty interesting thing that happens. Um, the area that was dark, darker earlier, uh, became red, and these um, uh, areas which were bright, those became again the, this color mix between yellow and green, uh, green and and blue. Sorry. And the reason for that is because um, in this area we have the same amount of green and blue um, and before we had also the same amount of red that was the reason why it, it appeared um, white or, or a bright grey uh, but now the, the red uh, gets spread uh, more over the entire object so there is less light here le less red light uh, to make th this um, nearly blue color uh, to white color and that's the reason why here where there is no red, uh, no blue and no green uh, it appears red and here where there is uh, more green and blue it appears in this other color and obviously uh, in between of, of these two areas this red one and this near blue one there has to be somewhere a gray place so that would be exactly the, the point where there um, where the blue and the green um, light gets less and the the red one gets more than than the other two so it's it's kind of a fall off from red to this okay and there are three more values I want to cover in this uh, video and that would be if, let's do the arrow value for uh, real quick there is no because there is not much to tell. Um, oops. So this is kind of the quality of the render. The larger this one is, the faster the render will be. So as you could see just now, it was really fast. But of course, uh, you will see that the quality gets worse if you make this one higher. For example, now you can really see there are some artifacts of low quality and if you would set that to a value as 0 0.001 let's see 0 0.01 
it would take much longer but it would be much more detailed okay and let's compare it very quick with with the one with the default value which would be 0 0.05 which would look like this and the difference is very slight just if you look very closely you can see a bit of a difference so <coughs> 0 0.05 is already really good if you want to have even a higher quality you can use 0 0.01 that's fine too um, okay now these two uh, here the front and the back um, value these um, define how um, how how much of of the light that gets into the object from the back side or fr from the front side should get scattered. Um, for example, um, if I would set the back value to zero, there should be no light going through the object when the light comes from the back side. And as you can see, just as I said, everything is black. Now let's put the light here to the side so it has the chance to hit the object from the front. So you can see it the light enters from the front and there is a uh, light going through the object even if it's it's not um, so easy to tell that there really is light going through the object there actually is so without a uh, subsurface scattering it would look totally different that would be like this very hard um, shadows and everything okay now, if I would set the front value to 0 and the back value to 1, you can see that um, there's no light uh, getting scattered from the front, and that's why it appears black. But if you put it here to the back side of the object, again, we'd have light going through it. And that's basically how it works. And now uh, there's yeah I would say that's it for this tutorial there are a lot of ways how to use subsurface scattering in an interesting way I usually do it uh, when I want to render skin or plastic objects or it, it makes the everything really really more realistic and yeah I hope you enjoyed this video if you would like to uh, see um, some updates about the project I'm working on at the time you feel free to uh, check out my Google Plus account that's where I post um, all the news and screenshots about my projects and yeah to see you next time bye